so so we were discussing about the plant kingdom yes so uh, plant kingdom ki uh, sab plants aata hai isme right ha ma'am Share screen. Okay. So, in the plant kingdom, here we can see all types of plants. So here comes the uh, algae. जो algae होता है primary or primitive uh, uh, primitive plants. That means very simple. Okay. So. इसमें जो आलगे का बॉडी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन होता है वो ज्यादा से ज्यादा सिंपल होता है वो टालस जैसा होता है उसका कोई डिफ्रेंशिएशन नहीं होता है वैसे कि वो स्टेम और रूट ओके एंड लीव राइट बट बट फ्रॉम ब्रायोफाइट इफ यू स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट ब्रायोफाइट ओके we already discussed algae these are photosynthetic okay so next comes the bryophytes so a bryophytes hota hai kuch zyada hi complex hota hai zyada wo algae se zyada to complex body organization bhi hota hai isme so bryophytes mein okay so basically bryophytes Uh, are called as amphibians. So, what are basically amphibians? Amphibians, क्या होता है? Amphibians, which are also ant. These are, of course, these are plants. Bryophytes are considered as plants only. Plant comes under plant kingdom only. The term amphibian means the organism. Which lives in the water as well as in the so uh, terrestrial. That means land on land and water also. So, जो bryophytes होता है वो amphibians कह जाता है कि क्योंकि वो land में भी जी सकता है और पानी में भी. Okay. हाँ. हाँ. इसलिए ऐसा कहता है amphibians of the plant kingdom. जैसे कि फ्रॉक्स आर द एम्फेबियंस इन द एनिमल किंगडम राइट सो लाइक दैट सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस सो हियर बेसिकली ब्रायोफाइट्स आर एम्फेबियंस एंड दे दीज आर मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स देन आलगे एंड हियर द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इन द टर्म्स ऑफ बॉडी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट मींस दे हैव मच डिफरेंशिएशन दैट मींस they have root like structure if not completely they possess roots and shoots and leaves okay they generally have root like structure leaf like structure okay and stem like structure okay so here that is the uh, different difference of the bryophytes Okay, here bryophytes have something like root. Those are not complete root. Okay, not particular root and shoot-like. Okay, and something leaf-like. So, what is the difference? What What do we mean by like? Here, there there is no vascular system. okay vascular system is absent a similar hota hai lekin true root nahi hai isme true leaf nahi hai true stem nahi hai bryophytes mein okay so generally this kind of thallus like organization is attached to the Mm, substratum by something called rhizoid okay 
So rhizoids are the supporting features. Okay. So here, uh, what will happen? These rise, uh, they attach it to the substratum, maybe uh, a damp soil, okay? That kind of thing on that uh, floody area regions. These rhizoids are helpful to attach this thallus like a uh, plant body to the substratum, okay? Basically, true roots, leaves, all are absent, okay? They may possess root-like, stem-like, and leaf-like structures. So plant body is haploid. So what we mean by haploid? A haploid kya hota hai? Haploid means a single set of chromosomes, okay? So single set of chromosomes, which is different from diploid. So generally, a plant body is a haploid. That means it is a gametophyte. So a gametophyte keh jata hai. So gametophyte. So generally, bryophytes, the main dominant part of their life is gametophyte. Okay. Most of the times they, uh, they live as gametophytes. So they produce haploid gametes. So here, Gametophyte is the dominant phase. This dominant phase is the haploid. This is the dominant phase. Hota hai. That means uh, most of the time the plant exists as a gametophyte. That means it is a haploid. That means only in every individual cell of the plant, you, 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 will, you can see only one single set of chromosomes. So that kind of gametophyte which produce gametes. So these gametes, they fuse together to produce zygote. Okay, that zygote will divide by meiosis. Okay, and to produce, okay, spores. And these spores will germinate to give again to give one such gametophyte. So similar to this, the life cycle would be. Jo gametophyte hota hai, wo haploid hota hai. Isme gametes produce hota hai. O gametes which are haploid, haploid gametes, wo um, fuse karke a zygote, a zygote milta hai, which is two and nature okay this two and nature that means two set of chromosomes here it is diploid okay diploid and in 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 the zygote meiosis will happen okay a meiosis ho jata hai meiosis ke baad again a spores ban jata hai a spores again are haploid so only zygote is the two n condition Okay, only zygote is in the 2N condition. So uh, the diploid condition or the sporophyte So the sporophyte is restricted to only one or few cells in the bryophytes. Okay. <clears throat> so basically uh, so this is uh, this is how the life cycle of a bryophyte would looks like. Okay, mm, generally mostly these are present as gametophytes. Gametes will produce. Okay, uh, gametes will produce on uh, male a male gamete and female gamete. Male gamete will be produced on male sex organs. Female gamete will be produced on female sex organ. 
so both will fuse together to form a zygote and um, <clears throat> inside zygote the meiosis will happen so after uh, this zygote is happened it may again divide by mitosis to produce few more cells so only that one or few cells are considered as the sporophyte okay and here those spores after meiosis spores will be produced from the uh, sporophyte okay these uh, these are in haploid condition and they again give rise to the gametophytic plant so similar to that the bryophyte life cycle will be so here um, basically two root um, as i already told you root like and stem like structures are present no true roots and uh, stem and leaves are <clears throat> present their plant body is haploid producing gametes hence uh, they are called as gametophyte okay so this is the predominant uh, phase of the bryophyte few main sex organs are called anthridium so as i told you gametophyte produce gametes so where the gametes will be produced inside the male sexual uh, male sex organ or female sex organ so as i told you plant body is a gametophyte so on this gametophyte or plant so gametophyte plant okay male female so mm, a gametophytic plant may male or female <coughs> uh female sex organs develop ho jata hai okay so oh, male male sex organs ko anthridium kehte hain anthridium एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन को हम कहते हैं आर्कीगोनियम ओके आर्कीगोनियम सो एंथ्रीडियम इज अ मेल मेल सेक्स ऑर्गन एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन इज कॉल्ड एज आर्कीगोनियम सो male sex organs are called anthridium and female sex organs are called, called archegonium so they give rise to multicellular body known as sporophyte okay this sporophyte will be developed from the from the gametes that are produced from male and female sexual organs so uh, multicellular body which is known as sporophyte actually this sporophyte as i told you this is very uh, this is restricted to only very few or uh, few cell structures so it is attached to the gametophyte itself so here okay so let us consider it as a so these are rhizoids a rhizoids hota hai consider them as rhizoids and here are some leaves okay and on which you can see <coughs> sex organs and here the male sex and female sex organs are developed and they produce gametes and they fuse together to form Uh, zygote and this zygote will develop and gives rise to this sporophyte which is attached to the same plant okay so sporophyte may be like this okay so up to here this is gametophyte okay from here to here this is sporophyte okay so this sporophyte is attached to the gametophyte so sporophyte is a uh, independent
so sporophyte is not independent sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte okay is sporophyte hota hai wo oh, independent independent gene ho sakte wo oh, uska photosynthesis apne aap nahi kar sakte isliye wo oh, depend karta hai gametophyte ke upar okay so <clears throat> these sporophytes attach to the photosynthetic gametophyte because photosynthetic these gametophyte which is primary plant body that is photosynthetic it can perform photosynthesis and uh, nourishment it can get nourishment from that so bryophytes are divided into liverworts and mosses these are the two groups in so coming to the liverworts what are liverworts एज नेम इंडिकेट्स जैसे कि नेम नेम है वो लिवर जैसा होता है Hence, these are also called as hepatic oxida or hepaticid. So, mostly these liver words are found in moist, shady regions such as marshy ground, bank of streams. damp soil bark trees and deep in the woods so hmm, these these are mostly as we already discussed these are amphibians so they won't be able to uh, res resist the dry places so mo mo they mostly found in moist and shady regions okay <coughs> plant body is thalloid thalloid and this thallus is dorsi ventral so uh, two uh, two phases dorsal and ventral two uh, two phases can be seen in the plant body okay the leafy members have small leaf like appendages on the stem like structures so some are having leaf like structures okay on the leaf like appendages on the stem like structures so on the stem you can see small leaf like structures in leafy members otherwise these are something like dorsi ventral they spread like this on the land they spread like mats okay asexual reproduction is through fragmentation <coughs> or the formation of gemma so this is the important term so basically hmm, iska reproduction kaise hota hai liverworts so liverworts iska reproduction either fragmentation fragmentation may be hota hai so a it may fragment and each fragment may be developed into a new plant and also by the formation of gemma gemma a structure may be asexual reproduction hota hai jaise ki a gemma gemma kab kya hota hai okay so basically it is a specialized structure okay these are green multicellular and asexual buds okay on the plant on the vegetative plant okay these gemma cups will be formed these gemma cups which are asexual <coughs> buds okay asexual birds these are green a green color mein hota hai aur multicellular and they develop into small receptacles called gemma cups so uh, they basically these gemma gemma cups 
they produce small buds called gemma and they they will be eventually detached from the plant body so on this plant body small structures will be formed okay gemma cup inside these gemma or but like formations will be will be happen and these buds may be detached eventually okay wo separate ho jata hai a gemma or asexual buds separate ho ho jata ho jata hai aur a independently ek aur plant ban jata hai okay so this gemma eventually developed into the plant so that is how the liver what will work okay uh, will reproduce <coughs> by asexual reproduction so during this sexual reproduction as usual male and female gametes will will be formed okay so these uh, these male and female uh, uh, female gametes are formed in the male sex organs and female sex organs that may be from the same thalli or separate thalli okay that may be on the same plant okay on the same plant male and female organs may be developed or may be um, on different plant may be male uh, male sex organs are formed on the one plant and on the other plant the female sex organs may be formed that kind so maybe uh, maybe on the same or different thalli sexual uh, sex organs may be produced so this sporophyte so after this um, male and female sexual organs are formed okay male and female gametes will be formed and they may fuse together to form zygote okay this zygote may be by mitotic division maybe <clears throat> it will uh, give some multiple cells okay that may be differentiate into foot seta and capsule okay so that means so if this is a sporophyte okay consider it as sporophyte something leaf like okay here are rhizoids sorry this is gametophyte so main plant okay so this is bryophyte plant on which some leaf like structures are there stem like structures are there and root like root like structures are there okay on which sex organs are produced okay fertilization is carried and then you can see the sporophyte development maybe sporophyte eventually developed into foot seta and capsule so this is and this is foot this is seta and here is a capsule so this is the sporo fight and this is the gametophyte okay so post meiosis that means meiosis ke baad mein spores are produced within the capsule so uh, here 
inside the capsule. Again, a capsule ke under. Okay, yes, sporophyte hai na? A capsule ke under again spores will be formed. Okay, so that means inside capsule meiosis will be carried. Okay, the capsule ke under meiosis ho jata hai uske mm, result mein spores ban jata hai. Spores again give rise to new plant which is gametophyte. Okay. So the next um, the next group is mosses. So these are also called as bryopsida mosses. And uh, gametophyte has two stages: protonema and leafy stage. What is protonema? So here the next the next group is mosses. So basically, bryophytes are liverworts and mosses liverworts as we already discussed okay uh, these are basically uh, moist places present in moist places okay body organization is dorsi ventral okay dorsal and ventral and uh, they have small leafy uh, leafy members okay some of the plants may have leaves uh, leaves like structures okay leaf like appendages and uh, how they reproduce asexual reproduction is through fragmentation and zemma cup so zemma cup we should uh, definitely remember this okay zemma cup and inside zemma cup zemma uh, gemma will be produced this is an sx1 bud that will be separated from the rest of the body and eventually develops into the plant Sexual reproduction, we already discussed. Archegonium, okay. And uh, anthridium, archegonium will be formed, will be produced on the gametophyte. And they produce male and female sex uh, gametes, and the gametes will be fused, and zygote will be formed. And this zygote will be. <coughs> um, will be divided to produce sporophyte, okay. In uh, the sporophyte may be differentiated into foot, seta, and capsule, and inside capsule, okay, meiosis will be carried and to produce spores, and each spore will be again developed into the gametophyte. So that is how the sexual reproduction will be happen in the liverworts. So coming to the uh, mosses, these are having gametophyte. Okay, haploid haploid plant or gametophyte have two stages. Okay, protonema stage. Protonema stage. Uh, basically, a is made two stages hota hai mosses. ओके और एक है प्रोटोनिमास्टेस और दूसरा वाला है लीफी ओके सो बेसिकली लीफी स्टेज प्रोटोनिमास्टेस इज वेजिटेटिव स्टेज इन विच इट इज इट विल स्प्रेड ऑन द लैंड ओके इट्स नॉट अपराइट ओके बेसिकली this protonema stays, what will happen? So this is the first stage. It develops directly from the spore. So from spore, the protonema will be developed. Okay, it will uh, develop from the spore. <coughs> it is creeping, branched and frequently filamentous stays. So basically, this is the first stage developed from this pore. Okay. This is like a creeper. 
okay and uh, mostly it is a filamentous state sorry yes one moment yes so this is filamentous phase ये प्रोटोनिमा फेज है वो स्पोर से बन जाता है ओ और ए पहले फे, पहला फेज होता है ओ क्रीपर जैसा वो जो लैंड में स्प्रेड होता है वैसा होता है और इसमें होता है द प्लांट बॉडी इसमें फिलामेंटस जैसा होता है ट्यूब जैसा होता है और और नेक्स्ट फेज होता है लीफी फेज ओके Mosses are having two stages in their life, and protonema stage and leafy stage. So protonema, uh, protonema stage we already discussed, and the leafy stage. The leafy stage is basically. So leafy stage develops from secondary protonema. So um, after this protonema is developed, leafy stage will be developed from this. protonema as a lateral bud okay so it is an erect phase okay so if okay consider it as a substratum okay this is protonema phase and this is leafy phase secondary phase so from spore spore will germinate into protonema phase and it is kind of creeper okay spread on the ground and it is filamentous the next stage is the leafy stage which is developed as a secondary uh developed from secondary protonema as a bud lateral bud okay so this is basically this leafy stage is slender okay erect or upright arranged and also it have leaves leaves which are arranged spirally okay ए लीफी स्टेज होता है वो ओ लैटरल बर्ड से बन जाता है लैटरल बर्ड ऑफ सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनिमा जो प्रोटोनिमा वो वो पैरल में स्प्रेड होता है ना वो ग्राउंड के ऊपर उसका उसका लैटरल बर्ड से ये लीफी स्टेज बन जाता है विच इज ए लीफी स्टेज होता है ओ इरेक्ट और अपराइट अपराइट होता है और इस इसमें लीव्स होता है स्पाइरल ओके एंड फ्रैगमेंटेशन कमिंग टू दी रिप्रोडक्शन रिप्रोडक्शन इज कैरीड बाय फ्रैगमेंटेशन ओके फ्रैगमेंटेशन एंड बर्डिंग सो बेसिकली कमिंग टू दिस सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन सेक्स ऑर्गन्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड ऑन एपेक्स ऑफ लीफी शूट्स सो ऑन द लीफी शूट्स एट द एपेक्स द सेक्स ऑर्गन्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड so uh, basically on the sex organ same similar to the uh, other other bryophyte that is liverwort sex organs will be archegonium and uh, anthridium so the difference is here sporophyte is is more elaborate
this stage is much developed than the other thing so basically uh, sporophyte in mosses are more elaborate than the liverworts that means this is much lendier okay a, a capsules comprised of spores formed of the meiosis so capsules comprised of spores so once after the uh, sexual reproduction is carried that means sex organs are produced and uh, mm, male and female gametes fusion of gametes okay Spo mm, sporophyte okay these spores will be formed from the sporophyte in the capsule okay so capsules comprise of spores formed of meiosis and here are some examples of the mosses funaria and sphagnum and then comes the pteridophyte so what are pteridophytes unlike bryophytes pteridophytes are much developed okay uh, they may have true leaves and shoots so bryophytes which are um, uh, which are not having true root leaf and stem okay but these pteridophytes are having true uh, true leaf stem and the root root system they found in damp cool and shady places okay found in sandy soil conditions that means these are not amphibians they can live on the land terrestrial habitat okay but they need some damp and cool climate around them but some are also sandy and soil conditions also survive in this sandy and soil conditions but most of them are damp and cool shady place habitats so here they include ferns and horse tails these two are the examples and uh, have some medicinal purposes and soil blend, uh, binders okay uh, and also frequently grown in the uh, grown as ornament plants okay they are first terrestrial to, to possess vascular tissue xylem and phloem so these are the first terrestrial as i told you generally these pteridophytes so pteridophytes are basically first plants to have vascular system so this vascular system is to transport water and supply food to the aerial parts or the or maybe the parts which buried in the soil so in order to transport food or the water so we need uh, the plant need vascular system so that kind of vascular system or vascular bundles are first developed in the plant kingdom in the pteridophytes only okay pteridophytes uh, a first plants hai jisme wo vascular bundles develop ho gaya and these are called as true true roots and leaves okay so basically plant body here until uh, until pteridophyte dominant plant body is gametophyte but in the pteridophyte sporophyte is the dominant plant body that means it is in two n condition okay so it is well dif differentiated into root stem and leaf okay sporophytes so sporophytes they bear sporangia 
okay sporangia in which spores will be produced so by meiosis from sporangia these spores will be produced and these spores germinate to produce prothallus which eventually gives rise to the plant so that is how they reproduce okay so sporophylls are these sporangia are located in the sporo fin okay so basically plant body in the pteridophyte okay so let us consider it as a plant body which is having true roots okay true stem and leaves okay and well differentiated they have vascular tissue that means inside the inside the veins they have xylem and phloem okay and what else they have sporangio sporophylls that means the leaves beneath which you can see sporangia in which spores will be developed and these spores <coughs> will be produced by meiosis and they germinate into produce prothallus <coughs> so most of them are homosporous okay uh, that means they produce similar kind of spores jo homosporous hota hai wo produce karta hai same kind of spores jo spores same hota hai same ek jaisa dikhta hai aur only some of them are heterosporous that means uh, some, only they can produce one large spore and the other spore is small spore that is microspore megaspore and microspore macro and microspores okay two kinds of spores jo heterosporous hota hai wo uh, do uh, wo produce karta hai ek macrospore aur एक माइक्रोस्कोपोर माइक्रोस्पोर होता है स्मॉल होता है और माइक्रोस्पोर होता है बड़ा बड़ा स्पोर होता है सो so, एक एक जैसा नहीं दिखने वाला स्पोर्स को कहते हैं हेटीरोस्पोरस एक जैसा दिखने वाला स्पोर्स को कहता है होमोस्पोर्स द टेरिडो फाइट्स आर फर्दर क्लासिफाइड इन टू साइलोपीडा लाइकोपीडा प्लांट इन विच the seed is naked naked seed it produce naked seed what do we what do we mean by naked seed so gymnosperm hota hai plant wo naked seeds ko produce karta hai iska matlab hai ki jo ovule hota hai na wo ovule mein okay ovule ko cover karne wala ovary wall is absent okay so ovules are not enclosed by ovary wall so here ovule is naked so hence it is called as a gymnosperm so before even before and after fertilization ovule is naked not surrounded by ovary wall so it is called as gymnosperm so basically what about the root system these are having tap roots okay and uh, these roots in gymnosperms 
roots may be associated with the nitrogen fixing bacteria such as mycorrhiza in the case of pinus okay and in some other uh, in some other plants like cycas you can also see uh, bacterial association so here in the pinus mycorrhiza is the fungal association and in the cycas cyanobacteria will be associated with the plants to fix the nitrogen so here some um, the stems are branched okay in the case of pinus and unbranched cycas so leaves may be simple or compound okay and leaves and gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand extreme temperature humidity and wind okay so gymnosperms are basically are having tap roots these ovules are naked first point to, to remember is ovules are naked and root system what about the root system these are having tap root tap root system okay and coming to the stems stems are branched or unbranched okay either branched or unbranched and what else these roots are either associated with mycorrhiza in the case of pinus or maybe cyanobacteria in the case of cycas example cycas so to fix nitrogen that may be associated with the nitrogen fixing bacteria or fungus so the leaves may be simple or compound so what about the leaf we talked about the uh, root stem then leaf leaf is simple or compound okay either simple okay or a compound leaf like this with the central v leaf lets are present that is called as compound leaf okay or simple leaf and leaves in gymnosperms are well adapted that means uh, generally gymnosperms are present in the harsh harsh climatic condition so to withstand what will happen uh, the leaves are well adapted that means they have some adaptations okay in conifers leaves are needle like that means to avoid trans transpiration the leaves are modified into needle needle like leaves to reduce the surface area and also associated with thick cuticle okay and shunken stomata okay these are the points to remember so here basically um, the roots are generally tap roots okay tap roots and that may be associated either with fungus or with bacteria such as cyanobacteria so what are the example fungal association is pinus happen in pinus and bacterial association example is cycas okay stems coming through stems they may be branched or unbranched and leaves that may be simple or compound leaves in gymnosperms are adapted to withstand extreme conditions so what will happen uh, when the, when a leaf is exposed to extreme hot then transpiration will be high so in order to avoid transpiration high, high transpiration or the loss of water from the leaf leaf body the leaf will be modified into uh, needle like form so that the surface area of the leaf will be reduced and the cuticle will be thickened and the stomata will be in the form of sunken stomata so that it uh, it is not easily losing water okay these are heterosporous that means uh, two kinds the strobile uh, 
Strobili bear two kinds of spores: microsporophylls and microsporangia. Microsporangia. Okay. Unlike earlier forms, gymnosperms in gymnosperms, male and female gametophytes do not have independent free existence. So here, from here, gymnosperms, there is no independent female gametophyte existence. Okay, plant body is only a sporophyte. Gametophyte is only restricted to the very few cells. Okay, gymnosperms होता है. Uh, gymnosperms का मतलब होता है. द प्लांट जिसके जिसमें नेकेड सीड होता है उसका मतलब वो ओवरी वॉल ओवरी वॉल नहीं होता है ओव्यूल इज ओवरी वॉल के साथ नहीं एसोसिएट होता है सो सो इसे कह जाता है कि नेकेड और इसमें टैप रूट सिस्टम होता है ओके वो फंगल एसोसिएशन के साथ वो नाइट्रोजन फिक्स करता है नाइट्रोजन फिक्सिंग होता है और कुछ और प्लांट्स में जैसे कि साइकस प्लांट में नाइट्रोजन फिक्सिंग होता है कि बैक्टीरिया के वजह से जो बैक्टीरिया के एसोसिएशन के वजह से जैसे कि साइनो बैक्टीरिया वो इसका एग्जांपल होता है साइकस और कम और स्टेम को देखने में वो स्टेम ब्रांच भी होता है अनब्रांच भी होता है और कमिंग टू द लीव्स ओके लीव्स को लीव्स जो जो होता है वो सिंपल भी होता है कॉम्पाउंड भी होता है हाँ सिंपल लीव्स में ऐसा दिखता है सिंपल लीव्स और कॉम्पाउंड लीव्स ऐसा दिखता है दिखने में ऐसा लगता है और इसका एक्सट्रीम सराउंडिंग सराउंडिंग्स के वजह से एक्सट्रीम टेम्परेचर्स के वजह से वो लीव्स में कुछ मॉडिफिकेशन होता है अगर न, अगर ये मॉडिफिकेशन नहीं होता है होता तो वो वाटर लॉस बढ़ जाता है ना इसीलिए मॉडिफिकेशन की जरूरी जरूरत होता है अगर वो प्लांट्स एक्सट्रीम कंडीशन में रहने वाले हैं तो इसीलिए जो लीव्स होता है वो नीडल्स नीडल्स लाइक बन जाता है और क्यूटिकल होता है ना वो थिक उसका थिकनेस बढ़ जाता है और स्टोमेटा शंकन स्टोमेटा कहलाता है शंकन स्टोमेटा कहलाते हैं वो डीपली डीपली बरीड स्टोमेटा होता है इसीलिए कि वाटर लॉस ना ना हो ना हो जाए और एज हेड्रोस्पोरस होता है कि यानी कि टू काइंड ऑफ स्पोर्स That means microsporophyll and microsporangia, and so uh, एक और एक और जरूरी uh, बात है और gymnosperms के बारे में वो कि वो ये है कि male और female gametophytes actually gametophytes doesn't have the independent free living existence. That means mostly the plant body is made up of sporophyte. okay the plant is a sporophyte not gametophyte okay next is angiosperms so angiosperms they occur in wide range of habitats okay uh in flowering plants so flowering plants are angiosperms so what are flowering plants basically so we covered with we already discussed the gymnosperms gymnosperms then coming to the angiosperms what is the difference so gymnosperms the seeds are naked okay here in angiosperms seeds are not naked but they have <clears throat> ovary that means ovule is present inside the ovary and flower is present that means uh, all these structures may be pollen and ovule All are present in the 
sex organ called flower so basically all angiosperms are flowering plants so they occur in wide range of habitats okay the pollen grains and ovules developed in specialized structures called flower okay and they have seeds which are enclosed in fruits okay so basically gymnosperms ke sath kya difference hai angiosperms ka jo angiosperms mein ovary ovary hota hai wo leke nahi hota hai ki o cover uska cover hota hai ovule ovary uh, is deeply uh, ovule is not naked ओके ओव्यूल ओव्यूल नेकेड नहीं होता है वो ओ बरीड होता है ओवरी में ओवरी में मिल मिलता है और ओवरी एंड पोलन ए बोथ होता है स्पेशलाइज्ड स्ट्रक्चर में जिसे कहते हैं फ्लावर ओके और सीड्स होता है ना ये सीड्स भी मिलता है फ्रूट्स के अंदर और क्या है इसमें चीज जो डिफर करता है जिम्नोस्पोर्म्स के साथ ए बेसिकली दिस एंजियोस्पोर्म्स आर एदर डिवाइडेड इनटू मोनोकॉट्स और डाइकॉट ओके मोनोकॉट्स एंड डाइकॉट्स व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस सो monocotyledons have single cotyledonous seed so when uh, when this angiosperm is germinating okay the seed is germinating if it is producing single cotyledon then it is called as monocot and if uh, two cotyledons are developing then it is called as dicot <coughs> excuse me <coughs> right <coughs> 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 so monocotyledons have single cotyledonous seed okay or sorry okay okay jo angiosperms hai wo wo uh, divide hota hai monocots and dicots ए मोनोकॉट्स होता है जिसमें कि सिंगल कॉटिलेडन होता है अगर ये सीड जर्मिनेटिंग इनटू इनटू फॉर्म अ सिंगल कॉटिलेडन ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ जर्मिनेशन ऑफ द सीड यू कैन इफ यू फाइंड ओनली सिंगल कॉटिलेडन देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज मोनोकॉट ओके सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस इन मोनोकॉट्स यू कैन यू कैन सी यू कैन नॉट सी द टैप रूट सिस्टम okay tap root system is absent and in dicots tap root system is present okay instead it is having adventitious roots okay uh, you can also see the parallel venation okay that means the veins are parallel like this to the leaf axis jo मोनोकॉट्स में पैरेलल वेनेशन होता है दैट मींस द वीन्स जो वीन्स होता है वो लीफ एक्सेस के साथ पैरेलल में होता है ऐसा और डाइकॉट्स में होता है कि रेटिकुलेट वेनेशन नेट जैसा वेनेशन होता है जैसा कि 
ये ऐसा नेटवर्क जैसा बनता है ओनली वेन सब मिल के एक नेटवर्क जैसा बनता है कि वो इसे कहते हैं रेटिकुलेट वेनेशन सो इन दोर्स द वेनेशन इज रेटिकुलेट और इन मोनोकर्ट्स द रेटिकुलेशन सॉरी वेनेशन इज पैरल so what else and trimerous flowers that means the number of petals or maybe sepals okay are three okay in each row each row okay three that is trimerous okay yeah so basically the difference between monocots and dicots that is important okay is single cotyledon here monocot single cotyledon dicots two cotyledons okay tap root system adventitious okay um number of cotyledons and root okay leaf venation is here in monocots this is parallel parallel venation and in dicot the leaf is in reticulate venation and coming to the flower flower is is trimerous this is pentamerous or tetramerous or uh, that means tetramerous or pentamerous that means either four or five parts in each roll of the plant so like this four petals okay again four sepals okay again four like this in each row you can find four uh, or five parts in the flower so basically so for higher plants like angiosperms okay inside pollen male sex organ is called as pollen is a pollen and female is ovary so inside pollen what will happen micro spore mother cell so what will happen they will germ <clears throat> so megaspore mother cell and microspore mother cell will be there and this basically okay it will divide into produce so spores okay these are in pollen grains in the form of pollen grains and ovary female have okay like this 
distal stigma ovary and maybe inside you can find the ovule so here you can find the ovule okay inside the ovary ovule will be there okay which produce mega spore mother cell and in which the meiosis will be carried okay after meiosis what will happen four cells are formed okay three are degenerated and only left with one single cell okay that will divide mitotically okay to produce okay eight cells and in eight cells three will be arranged they form the embryo okay so this embryo is made up of these eight cells which are having three antipodals and three egg operator apertures and two polar nuclei and these polar nuclei actually fuse to form secondary secondary nucleus sorry nucleus so this secondary nucleus and one egg so once after pollen simultaneously in the pollen grain okay microspore mother cell so that will gives rise to a micro spore okay so which will which will be poll uh, which will be <coughs> spread through pollination okay which will germinate on the ovule and reach the ovule and there it fuses with the egg to produce zygote okay and the other nucleus will be fusing with the secondary nucleus secondary nucleus will also be participated in the fusion so secondary nucleus which is already in uh, 2n condition will be fused with the polar nuclei and produces the primary endosperm nucleus or pen and which is eventually developed into endosperm so there are two fusions so that is called double fertilization okay here in the in the form in during the formation of primary endosperm nucleus there is a fusion of three nucleus so it is called as triple fusion okay and during the process of zygote this is called syngamy so these are the terms to remember syngamy triple fusion and double fertilization so let's go back so this is this is about the 
sexual reproduction in angiosperms okay <coughs> sorry so basically in angiosperms okay okay in angiosperms okay each ovule has megaspore mother cell okay ek each ovule ke uh, pass hota hai megaspore mother cell which undergoes meiosis so a megaspore mother cell wo ovule mein hota hai wo meiosis ke meiosis ho jata hai isme isme meiosis ho jata hai jo meiosis ke wajah se four haploid megaspore मेगास्पोर सेल्स होता है मेगास्पोर्स प्रोड्यूस होता है ओके और एमोंग एमोंग ऑल फोर थ्री ऑफ देम विल डी जनरेट एंड ओनली वन डिवाइड टू फॉर्म एम्ब्रियो सैक ओके जो मेगास्पोर्स में होता है ओनली एक को uh, एक, एक के साथ ए एम्ब्रियो सैक बन जाता है एम्ब्रियो सैक so a embryo sac upon dividing okay upon uh, upon the mitosis it produces three celled egg apparatus uh, apparatus and one single uh, egg cell and two synergids okay is three celled egg apparatus mein one is egg hota hai aur two kaha jata hai ki synergids and three antipodal cells or two polar nuclei the polar nuclei eventually fuse to produce diploid secondary nucleus so a polar a polar nuclei mein a polar nuclei mein do nucleus nucleus hota hai na ek dono mila ke secondary nucleus ban jata hai one of the main gamete fuses with the egg cell okay जो दो दो गैमेट्स होता है ना वो ट्रैवल करता है इसमें एक मेल गैमेट को एक के साथ फ्यूज करता है वो सिंग में कहते हैं टू फॉर्म जाइगोट द अदर गैमेट फ्यूजेस विद डिप्लॉयड सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस टू प्रोड्यूस ट्रिप्लॉयड प्राइमरी एंडो एंडोस्पोम न्यूक्लियस ओके सो इसे कह जाता है डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन क्योंकि यहाँ दो फर्टिलाइजेशन हो रहा है ना इसीलिए सो हियर व्हाट वी लर्न सो एक इसे कहते हैं कि सिंगमिंग एंड डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन सो okay the sexual reproduction in angiosperms so the sexual reproduction in angiosperms will be happen in the in the um, specialized structure called flower okay which bears the pollen and ovary okay inside the pollen pollen grains will be formed okay inside the ovary ovule will be formed inside the pollen grain okay microspore mother cells will be there okay inside the ovule megaspore mother cell will be there so microspore mother cell upon meiosis will produce microspores okay so here microspores will be produced so 
there will be two male gametes okay that will be involved in the fertilization so inside the megaspore mother cell that is <clears throat> uh, that will be under uh, undergoing for meiosis to produce four cells among the among four three will be degenerated okay only one cell will be involved in the formation of embryo sac okay and this one cell upon the mitosis produce uh, many cells and among which okay eight cells will be produced and three are called as anti antipodals okay and three are egg gyrators and in which one is egg and two are synergids okay this will be in involved in the fusion with the male gamete okay this egg cell and male gamete both will be fused to form zygote okay egg and male gamete will be fused to produce zygote and this is called syngamy okay and the secondary nucleus okay that is produced from the polar nucleus secondary nucleus and the second male gamete will be fused together to produce pen or primary endosperm nucleus and eventually that will be developed into endosperm so two fertilizations are taking place the two uh, fusion are taking place so hence it is called as double fertilization and here 2n plus n condition is uh, going to happen in the primary endosperm hence it is called as triple fusion okay jo male uh, male gametes hota hai na two male gametes and isme ek hi uh, ek hi fuse hota hai egg ke sath aur zygote ban jata hai ise kehlata hai ki syngamy aur the dusra male gamete fuse hota hai uh, ki secondary nucleus ke sath is isse kehte hain uh, ki ट्रिपल फ्यूजन एंड रिजल्ट में ये प्राइमरी एंडोस्पोम न्यूक्लियस मिल जाता है और इसे वो इवेंचुअली एंडोस्पोम की तरह बन जाता है इसे कहता है डबल फ्यूजन और ट्रिपल डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड द प्रोसेस इज सिंगमी इन विच द जायोट इज फॉर्म एंड ट्रिपल फ्यूजन इन विच द पेन इज फॉर्म द प्राइमरी एंडोस्पोम न्यूक्लियस इज फॉर्म so after this what will happen <coughs> the other male uh, pen because of the occurrence of two fusions or syngamy and triple fusion it is called double fertilization event is unique to the angiosperms so ye uh, unique event hai angiosperms mein hi mil jata hai aur zygote develops into embryo and pen develops into endosperm as we already discussed synergids and antipodals degenerate after fertilization and during these events the ovules form seeds and ovaries form fruit so a is uh, iski parallel mein a process jaisa ki a double fertilization triple fusion ho raha hai chal raha hai iske sath ye ovary ovary hota hai na ovary fruit ke taraf convert hota hai aur ovule सीड की तरह कन्वर्ट होता है एंड दिस इज हाउ द एंजोस्पोम लाइफ साइकिल विल लुक लाइक ओके दिस इज माइक्रोस्पोर एंड दिस इज मेगास्पोर ओके माइक्रोस्पोर हियर इनसाइड माइक्रोस्पोर दैट मींस पोलिंग ग्रेन ओके इनसाइड विच टू मेल गैमिट्स आर देयर वन एंड टू okay one is fusing with egg and the other will be fusing with this secondary nucleus okay so secondary nucleus here is secondary nucleus and zygote will be formed and from which embryo 
so here two cotyledons are developing that means this is a dicot so this is called as sporophyte so plant life cycle and alternation of generations plant life cycle uh, there is great variation observed in the plant cycle since uh, different plants exhibit different le uh, levels of complexity so plant life cycle okay uh, take for uh, take for example algae so what is happening so haplontic the life cycle is called haplontic haplontic so basically um, sporophyte is very much less here okay only maybe a single cell then it is called as haplontic maybe haplophyte is very much dominating okay in algae the plant body is haplo haploid so this is called as haplontic life cycle okay only one single cell the sporophyte that means a two n condition is only occurs in zygote so that is called haplontic life cycle and coming to the other life cycle that is diplontic life cycle which is happening in the higher plants like angiosperms and gymnosperms okay in angiosperms and gymnosperms the life cycle is diplontic that means here the plant body is mostly sporophyte that means it is in 2n condition okay so only the gametophyte plant is very much minimal or maybe very few celled okay dominating plant body and photosynthetic plant body is the sporophyte only so here gametophyte is very uh, very minimalistic that means very uh, a single cell to few celled haploid gametophyte okay maybe male gametes and female gametes only the, those are the <coughs> considered as the male gametophytes male and female gametophyte so it is single cell or maybe very few cells okay so the next type of life cycle is the haplodiplontic haplodiplontic occurs in the pteridophytes okay take an example of terido right and and bryophytes so pteridophytes and bryophytes what will happen so here haplodiplontic here haploid life cycle is there diploid life cycle is there but here depends upon the uh, depends upon the type maybe ter in pteridophytes sporophytic life, life cycle is dominant and in bryophytes gametophytic life cycle is dominant but both are multicelled unlike the haplontic or diplontic life cycle here both are dominant but maybe uh, sporophyte is um, sporophyte is dominant in the case of uh, pteridophytes and gametophyte is dominant in the case of bryophyte but both are multicelled but here in the haplontic life cycle uh, sporophyte is uh, single cell and here in the diplontic life cycle gametophyte is single cell so that is uh, those are the different life cycles so basically in algae haplontic life cycle is observed where sporophyte generation is depicted only one single zygote where there are uh, there are no free living sporophytes and dominant phase is marked by gametophyte and diplontic life cycle is observed with few variations in angiosperms and gymnosperms okay diplontic uh, sporophyte in this 
life cycle is dominant as i already told you sporophyte is dominant in diplontic cycle sporophyte is dominant that means two and that means two sets of chromosomes are there in every part every cell of the plant in case of angiosperms and gymnosperms okay so this is this plant sporophytic plant is photosynthetic and independent stage of the plant gametophyte phase is indicated by only single cell or few cell okay what about the pteridophytes and bryophytes they exist intermediate stage known as haplodiplontic life cycle okay so what will happen in haplodiplontic life cycle okay sporophyte here is multicellular and dominant stage varies dominant stage may be varies but uh, both are multicellular sporophyte as well as the um, gametophyte are multicellular here bryophyte gametophyte is dominant and sporophyte is dominant in pteridophytes so alternation of generation Hello. Am I audible? Hello. So. <clears throat> ये प्लांट लाइफ साइकिल में थ्री थ्री टाइप्स होता है एक डिप्लॉन्टिक होता है और और एक तो हैप्लो डिप्लॉन्टिक होता है और एक हैप्लॉन्टिक होता है ए हैप्लॉन्टिक क्या होता है हैप्लॉन्टिक होता है जैसे कि इन आलगे आलगे एंड अदर लोअर ऑर्गेनिजम इसमें हैप्लॉन्टिक लाइफ साइकिल कहते हैं क्योंकि इसमें स्पोरोफाइट होता है ना वो स्पोरोफाइट का वक्त वेरी कम होता है इसमें इसका मतलब है कि ए सिंगल सेल्ड जाइगोट से होता है देर इज नो फ्री लिविंग स्पोरोफाइट ओके ए डोमिनेंट फेज नहीं होता है स्पोरोफाइट ताकि वो गैमिटोफाइट होता है ना वही डोमिनेंट होता है इसीलिए कि ये हैप्लॉन्टिक लाइफ साइकिल कह जाता है और कम और डिप्लॉन्टिक लाइफ साइकिल क्या होता है डिप्लॉन्टिक लाइफ साइकिल होता है जैसे कि इन एंजियोस्पॉम्स जिम्योस्पॉम्स में वो दिखता है वो होता है डिप्लॉयड डिप्लॉयड फेज डोमिनेंट होता है डिप्लॉन्टिक का मतलब है डिप्लॉइड स्पोरोफाइट फेज इसमें डोमिनेंट होता है वो फोटोसिंथेटिक होता है डिप्लॉइड डिप्लॉइड फेज ओनली फोटोसिंथेटिक होता है वो इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिपेंडेंट होता है और गैमेटोफाइट के गैमेटोफाइट होता है वो सिंगल सेल्ड होता है वो उसका इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं होता है वो डिपेंडेंट ओनली स्पोरोफाइट ऐसा होता है इसे कहते हैं डिप्लॉन्टिक लाइफ साइकिल ओके कमिंग टू दी अदर लाइफ साइकिल दट इज हैपनिंग इन द टेरिडोफाइट्स एंड ड्रायोफाइट्स सो टेरिडोफाइट्स और ड्रायोफाइट्स में कुछ और अलग जैसा लाइफ साइकिल मिलता है उसे कहते हैं कि हैप्लो डिप्लॉन्टिक हैप्लो डिप्लॉन्टिक का मतलब ये होता है कि बोथ स्पोरोफाइट और गैमिटोफाइट दोनों डोमिनेंट दोनों मल्टी सेल्युलर होता है 
ओके दोनों मल्टी सेलुलर होता है कि फर्क ये पड़ता है कि डोमिनेंट फेज अलग होता है अगर ब्रायोफाइट्स में बोले तो वो गैमेटोफाइट डोमिनेंट होता है और स्पोरोफाइट्स में बोल टेरिडोफाइट्स में बोले तो कि स्पोरोफाइट स्टेज डोमिनेंट होता है इसे इसे कहते हैं कि एप्लो डिप्लॉन्टिक सो वॉट आर ऑल्टरनेशन ऑफ जनरेशन सो देर आर टू सिस्टम्स ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन इन प्लांट्स ईच इज कॉल्ड जनरेशन एंड आर रिलेटेड हेंस वन कंप्लीट लाइफ साइकिल हैज टू जनरेशन वन इज ओके हैप्लॉइड ओके देन अगेन डिप्लॉइड ओके it will produce spores gametes okay gametes will uh, fuse to form spores okay again it will it become diploid and diploid will produce gametes okay undergo by undergoing meiosis it will produce gametes and gametes will fuse likewise one after the other one uh, one generation after the other will happen in a cycle so that is called alternation of generations <coughs> while a haploid cell has one set of chromosomes as as we already discussed haploid cell has one set of chromosomes uh, in diploid cell to, there is there are two sets of chromosomes haploid generation produce plants with diploid cells okay which create a generation of haploid cells that turn give rise to the that means once after the other the generations will go on okay the cycle will go on of one of the other haploid after diploid diploid after haploid the bad genes are removed in haploid stage so generally why it is happening the bad genes will be removed in the haploid stage so uh in the diploid stage the variation genetic variation or the genetic diversity will happen so this is the importance of alternation of generations the bad genes will be removed in the haploid stages okay and diploid stages what will happen genetic diversity will be happen so that is what the importance of the alternation of generations so is it clear is there anything to discuss yes any doubts yes please samajh mein aaya ki nahi so here ends the topic of plant kingdom so we'll discuss uh, we'll come with the next topic called animal kingdom in the next class okay